Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I have a guest today. Her name is Luba, and actually I'm her guest <laughs> because we're in her office. She works for Airbnb, and today we're gonna talk about how you can get into a big American company as an international applicant. How do you get your visa sponsored, and how do you work? How do you feel like working in such a cool company like Airbnb? So if you're interested, please continue watching this video. Back to San Francisco. Our minds may change. The first time when I visited Airbnb's office was back in 2015 and this building was shared with Pinterest, Conquer, some other companies and there were 500 employees. Now, how many do you have? Four and a half thousands around that around the world. Oh my god. And they have the whole office now and they occupy another building as well. And, and another one. What? Two more buildings. Oh, yeah. two more. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. I've only been to two of them. Wow. And they also have like office in Europe. Wow. So you are an international student. You moved from Belarus to Canada mm -hmm. and you somehow ended up working for Airbnb. Tell us, how is that possible? So yeah, that is indeed correct. I was brought and raised in Belarus and after graduating high school in Belarus, I moved to Canada to do my bachelor's degree at University of Waterloo in Canada. And then after graduating, I ended up here in San Francisco in the States working for Airbnb and while I was working in Canada I actually did an internship here at Airbnb so partially that is the reason why I decided to come here full-time afterwards. You're gonna be surprised she works as and I'm gonna make a pause here because you have to guess what she does at Airbnb you would never guess she's actually a back-end engineer right back -end. Yeah, back -end even, software not, engineer. even not front-end like front-end <laughs> So maybe designing some, but no, she's a back-end engineer. This is a real listing. Like everything here at Airbnb, like every conference room is a real listing. And you can actually sit here and have your conference call. It's a little too small. So you studied chemical engineering, right? That's you correct. started to study chemical engineering, but somehow then you realized that mm -hmm. coding is your passion. Tell us, uh, how did you get this um, engineering um, education finally? Yeah, for sure. So as Marina has mentioned, I did study chemical engineering and part of the reason why I studied chemical engineering is because I was really, really into chemistry when I was in high school and I decided to do something more applicable with mm -hmm. chemistry. So I picked a chemical engineering degree. However, one of the amazing things that I'm really grateful for about my university is that we had a call program where every other semester we had to do an internship to graduate. It was a requirement. It mm -hmm. wasn't optional. And because of the, those internship experiences, I actually realized that chemical engineering was not something that I saw myself doing after mm -hmm. graduating. I think it was in second year university when I finished my second internship as a chemical engineer. I was like, yeah, this is not something that I see myself doing, but at the same time, I have so many ideas of what I could potentially be interested in. And I was totally l lost. It's honestly, I was so jealous of people who just had it figured mm -hmm. out. Cause mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I could try this and that, but it's all time commitment to figure it out. But luckily, I had friends that were in software engineering and computer science and did all these am amazing internships in Silicon Valley at the time. I actually have never thought that I would be interested in uh, coding because mm -hmm. in fact when I took chemical engineering uh, programming classes I absolutely hated them. Those were <laughs> like my least favorite <laughs> classes so, ever. So but So I was actually really close-minded to the idea of trying um, programming courses but then some of my friends convinced me being like yeah but just try taking an online course who knows maybe you like it mm -hmm. and then finally I was converted to being like okay I'll try a course and mm -hmm. then I signed up for Code Academy's web development course and HTML CSS pretty easy introductory course that gives you an instant output of what you're actually coding that is very gratifying I signed up for that course and I was like oh this is actually not as bad as I mm -hmm. thought and now I'm thinking that it's the problems that I was solving in chemical engineering that I was not interested in and that 
that's why I hated that program and yes. course so much. That's that's why I think internship is really important. Like Definitely. Uh, trying to work during your course. And this is why I also always advocate for Canada as well. Because if even if you do like a master's program there, you do a semester of studying, semester of working, semester of studying. These are the co-programs. First, you get real life work experience and you understand what you like. Mm -hmm. Second thing, you can earn some money. And what you mentioned, right? You only pay for like a year and a half. Your parents, yeah. if you pay for a year and a half and the rest, like, 3.5 years of education yeah. uh, she was able to support herself which is great for like expensive countries like Canada for example definitely that is actually an amazing thing about Canada despite the fact that is already cheaper education in Canada is way cheaper than the education in the States but the ability of earning money while I was studying was mm -hmm. so key to me being able to support myself and support mm -hmm. my education this is Luva's desk and you can tell that she's just like me because how many supplements does she have here? Maybe 10. How much time do you spend here? Uh, I spend about 9 to 10 hours here a day. Wow. So I come in at about 9 in the morning and I try to leave most likely 6.30 or so. But you have food here, right? So you can have yeah. breakfast, lunch, dinner. Yes, I have all my three meals here usually. Unless wow. I, I'm grabbing dinner. Well, you don't someone. have to cook. I'm jealous. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so nice. <laughs> and you have sports here as well right I've seen mm. yoga uh, we do have yoga mm. in the other building mm. I used to go I don't go as much anymore I just go to a separate gym we don't mm. have a gym in the building because we're so community oriented we were told that there is so many gyms in the neighborhood we should uh, support the community yeah, that's true what about your holidays how many days of holidays? Yeah, so uh, we're very lucky because our company is given a gift to employees every year where we're closing down for two weeks during Christmas. So mm -hmm. that's holidays that is completely set in stone. And then we have 14 days of PTO, which actually comes down to about three weeks counting um, weekends. Moving back to the story, I tried out online courses and I mm -hmm. actually enjoyed it. And I decided to basically take a gamble and try to get an internship as a software engineer to see, as Marina said it's very important to try out the actual real world field mm -hmm. to see if I liked it or not and I studied really hard for about a year and mm -hmm. I ended up getting an internship at Yelp in Silicon Valley in San Francisco and that's how I made my transfer. For you to understand even if you study in Canada or you study in India or you study in Brazil it doesn't matter for the American immigration system. You're still an immigrant, mm -hmm. there are no privileges, and they still rate you according to whatever rules they have. So you need to find a company yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to uh, get their permission to sponsor your J-1 visa. You need to apply for a J-1 yeah. visa. This is not something like that, uh, that our Canadian students are privileged for. What I love about huge companies like Airbnb, they have amazing offices and every single floor has at least two cafeterias. The best thing about Airbnb, what you see here is not the full selection, but this is like kombucha, lemonade, green tea. Uh, and if you go to the main canteen, they have 21 sorts of kombucha. And this is the best. This is pistachio and strawberry. This, like, guys, I've tried maybe like 100 sorts of kombucha in my life, and this is the best. So, uh, how did you do that? Yeah, that is super true. You have to hustle. You have to hustle really hard. I hustled a lot. I was reaching out to everyone I know. I was cold emailing so many companies. Uh -huh. There is this website, I think it's called Product Hunt, and there is Angel List uh -huh. for different startups in the area yeah. because I wasn't hoping that a big company will take mm -hmm. me, someone mm -hmm. with no experience, someone who was self-taught. So I was cold emailing all wow. these founders of small startups saying how passionate I am about learning and about their products. Uh -huh. And um, that's basically how I, was how I was trying to get my foot on in the door and I was trying to leverage my, my network as much as I could. I was emailing recruiters on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. trying to have someone look at my resume as well as applying in traditional ways on companies' websites. But to be honest, I think that hustling and trying to reach out to people directly is the key to getting your foot in the door. And what, wor what worked with Yelp? Was it like a connection that you had or you just applied through the website? It was actually a funny story. It was a combination of two things. It was uh -huh. a combination of being a hustler and hustling and it was a combination of my university too. So um, as I said, my university has a co-op program. So they do hire a lot of people from Silicon Valley. So the name is quite well known. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually, 
saw that on the, my LinkedIn profile, a recruiter from Yelp just looked at my profile, which I thought was super random because mm -hmm. I had nothing related to computer science or tech on mm -hmm. my profile. It was all chemical engineering, but I was like, oh my God, this is an opportunity. Yeah. I have to uh, message this person, despite the fact I have not nothing on my profile i messaged him being like hey so i saw you looked at my profile i know there is nothing computer science related on it but i'm <laughs> like i really am interested in internship opportunities so here's my resume uh -huh. and he actually looked at it and he wow. responded and he was like oh i'm actually at your university's campus next week do you want to meet up wow and i was like no i'm actually in germany because i was in germany on exchange at the time uh. <laughs> so i said but how about we connect over skype and then he's like yeah yeah just like message me i'll get back to you when i'm done with recruiting mm -hmm. season mm -hmm. and i actually was not ready to interview at the time so i didn't message him and he obviously did not message me back either because mm -hmm. he had no interest in messaging <laughs> me back but three months later what when, when i I was really prepared i messaged him being like hey remember me i um i'm still very interested in internship opportunities here's my resume and he responded because he remembered me wow. and he's like do you want to do a call next week and that's nice. how i got my foot in the door So how many companies have you reached out to? Oh, a lot, like 100 for sure. Because as I said, I was reaching out to so many little startups as well as big yeah. companies. So remember, it's it's all like the numbers game. Uh, if you reach out to 10 companies, you get nothing. Uh, don't just continue sitting on yourself and just go on and reach out to more companies. Like 100 yeah. is a good number and you will definitely get something, at least the idea where to go next. Definitely. You have to be proactive. Otherwise, I mean, there's so many other people competing with you at the same time. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. After Yelp, uh, you went back to Canada and then yeah. you applied for an internship at Airbnb, right? That's correct. Yeah, I had another internship semester, so I had to get an internship somewhere. And I was again applying to a lot of companies, but I was a little more selective because mm -hmm. I already had a big name on my resume, so I, I was feeling more cool. Yeah, Yeah. actually, was that also random how I got an interview at Airbnb because a friend of mine connected me to Andres and Horvitz, so A16Z mm. uh, recruiter. Yeah, yeah, VC mm -hmm. fund, and they have a lot of portfolio companies, Airbnb mm -hmm. is one of them, mm -hmm. and they connect their portfolio companies with talent, and nice. that recruiter connected me with a recruiter at Airbnb, nice. and that's how I got an interview at Airbnb. That's a great tip, we just discussed it um, during the live stream that we mm -hmm. had with Vlad, and he just graduated from Harvard, and he said, a lot of graduates actually get jobs through VCs. I'm going to talk a lot about networking on my second channel, by the way third channel, <laughs> Silicon Valley Girl. We're going so many channels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the link will be below. Tell me about this room. Yeah, so this room is the original, is a prototype of the original Airbnb apartment where the founders started Airbnb. This room is called Roush because the apartment was on Roush Street and actually uh, it's still there on Rouse Street and on the floor of the living room of this Rouse apartment were the first people who were living on Airbnb. Wow, this is how the room looked like and two guys, Brian and Joe, right? And they were like, how do we make some money? Like, because uh, rent in San Francisco is so expensive. Maybe we can make some extra money by just blowing up the mattress and just renting it out. And this is how Airbnb started. Yeah. And I think there was a conference that was going on in San Francisco and they realized they're gonna have the demand because the hotels were fully booked. Wow, this is so cool. So, and then after this internship, they actually invited you to work full-time right yeah so it's a very common practice here in the valley and i think in a lot of other industries too to vet potential full-time candidates based on their internship at the company and it's actually very safe too because you you as a company as an employer got to work with that person you saw their work mm -hmm. and then if they liked it they give you a full-time offer and that's what happened to me i got a full-time offer at airbnb and then after 
thinking about other companies and other options, I decided to accept it and come back. What kind of visa have they sponsored? Yeah, so I went on J1 uh -huh. after graduation, actually. You can do a J1 visa after graduating university because I wasn't eligible to apply for an H1B that mm -hmm. year because you have to have a diploma in yeah. April and I didn't. You have to have like a bachelor's um, in order to be eligible for an H1B. Exactly, yeah. so I was on J1 for a year with the caveat that they're gonna sponsor me for an H1B mm -hmm. for the following year and mm -hmm. I was lucky to get it. Congrats, yeah, the chances like, uh, well people say the chances to get H1B if you don't have masters from an American university is 30%, yep. so you're very lucky. But if you have masters from an American university, your chances uh, go up to 80%. Your goal is to work for an American company. First, hustle. Definitely. Second, uh, network. Third, um, if you have opportunity, get education in the States. But if not, like Canada is also close and it gets you chances to, you know, work during your studies and also get some, some work experience here in the States. Can you give an advice to somebody who's international, mm -hmm. willing to work in a big American corporation and doesn't know where to start? Yeah, for sure. I would say Google is your friend. There is a ton of resources. I, I'd say Quora is an amazing resource uh -huh. that I found a lot of information from. It's a forum where people actually, people who know about the field and who know about the question um, that you're asking can give you advice and information. And I found a lot of useful stuff, visa related and mm. jobs related. You can type in any question, like any, there, there's almost everything that's surprising. Yeah, how it is. and then just reach out to people. You will be surprised at how willing people are to help actually. You might think that, oh, that person will never respond to you. But if you're different, if you show your passion, if you show your interest in wanting to learn or wanting something and you can help them potentially in some way which is very important too you will be surprised at how many people can actually respond to you and i would say just try to find resources with respect to your particular field of websites that you should be reading maybe articles maybe different forums and interact with people people is a huge advantage to trying to get your foot in the door Your English is your number one priority if it's not advanced yet. So um, my advice would be if you can travel to Canada, for example, take a two, three week course. If you can travel to San Francisco, take a language course in the morning and then use the afternoon to connect with companies, mm -hmm. to attend meetups, to meet people. The link will be below linguatrip.com. We're happy to help you with not only language courses, but also higher education, like admissions process. Yeah, you can book everything, like all of the schools, you can book them online with a discount because our prices are cheaper than booking directly with school and everything is online. And this is basically what I do, what is, the, this is my business, this is my company. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video up to the very end. If you enjoyed this content, please like this video and support us with your comments. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel, subscribe. And if you're willing to study and work abroad, check out linguatrip.com and we're gonna help you make your dreams come true. Thank you so much and thank you so much for thank you, an amazing tour, an amazing day. Bye. Bye guys. <laughs>